What are you passionate about? Are you happy? Are you really happy? Do you trust your own instinct? What is your perception of God? Are you the best version of yourself? This is Conversations We Never Had, hosted by Wendy. I am so excited to be sitting down with Unye Lady Ndubane. Who is Lady? Unye Lady is a Tonga girl mm -hmm. from Pretoria. Yeah. Um, she's an actress, she's a performer, she's a writer, slightly neurotic. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit crazy and um, yeah, just inspired by the world and everything around her. Nyeledi means star if I'm not... Yes, yes it do does. Do you feel like one? I honestly think that my father had the right idea because apparently um, when I was born he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And then when he arrived and he saw me, he, like that was the first name that popped into his head. So okay. yes, I feel like people live up to their names and... I'm on the road to living up to mine. I certainly believe that I am indeed a star. What is the most unusual thing that you have sort of done? Well, I don't think it's too unusual, but every time I talk to people about it, I, I get funny reactions. So um, I'm an actress and that means that I go to auditions mm -hmm. so that I can get work, yeah. but then you don't, it doesn't always mean that if you go to an audition, mm -hmm. you'll get the gig. Yeah. So sometimes I go for a few months without having work. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of being depressed and wanting to jump off a cliff, mm -hmm. I decided, hey, let me write something mm -hmm. and then star in it. Let me create work for myself. Mm -hmm. So then um, I started thinking about what could I write about. I so started yeah. thinking about my love life. And I noticed the pattern about how I date Zulu guys mm. who treat me badly all the way from my first boyfriend when I was six years old up until now mm. So I said to myself. Hey, let me put that into a show a yeah. one-woman show yeah. So I I have a one-woman show called there's a Zulu on my stupid heart mm. and I basically chronicle all of the things that I've gone through with all of the Zulu boys that I've dated from age six all the way up until now. And yes, and, <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, his name when I was age six, my boyfriend at age six, his name was Mfundo Nyoka. Mm -hmm. And so I fondly think of him as the snake that taught me my first lesson about Zulu men. Hmm. So yeah, that's, people think that that's weird, but yeah, I took my misery and, and turned it into and turned it into work. work. And now hopefully it's gonna make me big bucks. It will. So, yeah. It will. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my parents. Mm -hmm. Um I only when I got to varsity did I realize that I had an amazing childhood. Mm -hmm. And Obviously, when you're in it, you're like, oh, mommy doesn't want to do this, and daddy is yeah, so annoying. Yeah, but, like, yeah. when, because when I got to varsity, you meet people from like all walks of life. Yes. And I realized there's so many people mm -hmm. that don't know who their fathers are, they've never met their fathers. How do you feel right now? I'm a mixed bag of emotions. I recently just lost my grandmother. Mm -hmm. that, that messed with me. Mm -hmm. That messed with me. Mm -hmm. um, especially because. Uh, apparently like I looked so much like her like right now when she was my age she looked exactly like me so yeah. um, so that was a big loss that was that was a very big loss and um, so I'm grieving I'm also I'm nervous about my show mm. um, because I'm busy rehearsing for it and trying to prep for it I want it to be amazing I want people to get it because I'm not trying to bash Zulu men and say Zulu men are bad. It's a it's a comedy, it's quirky, it's it's me, it's my personality. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that people get it. So how am I feeling right now? I'm a mixed bag of emotions mm -hmm. but I'm proud of myself. It's so hard to to be proud of yourself. I mean for me it took me a long time to realize where what I've done to be proud of myself and to say, okay, these are the dreams, these are my next dreams, and this is how I'm going to maneuver and getting to achieve them. Yeah. But to say you're proud of yourself. I used to teach 
drama to kids yeah. and then every time they do something good we'd always teach them to go well done me mm. well done me so like mm. even though i don't teach the kids anymore like i still do that like every yeah. time i you know like if i get a call and they're like yeah, yeah you got a call back for this audition or you got this gig mm. like even if i'm driving whatever i'm doing i always take that more well done so me. that's it you so know, sometimes you don't that's... necessarily have to go big in, in terms of celebrating, but yeah. just, just to take a moment and say, yeah. well done me. Yes. Yes. What makes you happy? Chicken. Chicken. Um, yes, food. I love chicken. I, yes, yes, food actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I love food. Um, but more than that, music. Okay? Um, I'm an actress, but I really, really love music. And it's a pity because when I sing, I sound like a duck. I really wish I could sing like because I'd express myself through that as well. But like, um, music makes me happy. Um, my nieces make me happy. Um, my, I've got three nieces. My brother and my sister have three little girls. Mm -hmm. um, every time they see me and they light up and they say, auntie, 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 I, uh, yeah, that, that, just, that just does something to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, my nieces, food and music, and movies, of course. Yeah. So. And what is the hardest um, situation that you found yourself in? My father's death. Because I think up until my father passed away, I didn't realize that I was raised like this. I was very sheltered. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I wasn't aware of things. I wasn't aware, like we were saying earlier, yes. I wasn't aware that some people don't even know their fathers. Mm. Um, I wasn't aware that some people have fathers, but their fathers neglect them. I, 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 and so this man who every time he saw me, his eyes would light up. And like, it, 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 I know that it probably doesn't really mean much, but you don't understand the sense of validation that that gives you. And as a girl child, to walk into a room and have your father look up, see you, and say, princess, that, that was it. And then after he died, the realization that I'm never going to hear that again. I'm never going to be validated by that man like that again that yeah that that took a long time to get over that took a long time to get over and um just dealing with the fact that like now he was the man that like i was his princess like he treated me like a gem and now you'll date a guy and then he'll treat you like nonsense and then you'll be like, what, what? But I don't grow up seeing this. Like where it's I'm not your from, reality. it's not my reality. Where I'm from, the man in my life treated me like, like a queen. Like a queen. What, what, you're treating me like I'm a hobo. What is this? So it was just um, coming to terms with the fact that like, yeah, this man, I'm never gonna see him again. I'm never gonna hear him calling me princess again. I. I, and the fact that the last time when I saw him, um, I was about to go to varsity. I was at home taking a swim and he was giving me the pep talk. He was like, don't forget what you're going to school for. Don't start running around with boys. I don't want a grandchild up until you are 30 years old. So don't come here pregnant. You know what I mean? He was giving me that fatherly talk. And then I was like, yes, daddy. No, no, no. I promise. I promise. Had a nice swim. He was watching Manchester United play soccer. After my swim, took a shower, got dressed. My mom was going to drive me to, to varsity said bye to him gave him a big kiss and a big hug not knowing that he was gonna die two days later that was the last time I saw him like that it's easier when someone is sick because you can prepare yourself I didn't see it coming and I didn't get a chance to go to varsity and make him proud he didn't get to see me graduate he he, he didn't get to see me, he didn't, I'm sorry, um, 
he didn't like the fact that I wanted to go into acting. Obviously, he was a doctor. He wanted me to either be a doctor or a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to really convince him and really like, mm -hmm. you know, negotiate with him to let me study drama. Mm -hmm. And when I got my first job out of varsity, my first job was on Generations. I got a seven month role on Generations. And I so badly wanted to tell him, Daddy, this is why. Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, the fact that I still cry about it and it's been 10 years just goes to show. So, yeah, um, that's the hardest thing I've had to deal with and I'm still dealing with it because every time something great happens, yeah. I can't. I can't tell him. He's not there. I can't, I can't tell him. I have to go to his grave and tell him there. But I take that and I go to his grave and I, and I tell him every good thing, bad thing, whenever I'm scared, anything, I tell him. And that's a little bit of consolation that I have, but I it shatters me and it breaks me that I never... You, you can't really, you don't... Do you I feel like you don't have co a connection with him? <sighs> because that's how I feel about my gran. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, sometimes things will happen. Like, sometimes I'll randomly hear his favorite song and... I'll feel like he's winking at me. Yeah. And he's saying, hi, I see you. And, um, I'm sorry. And how do you? Thank you. Can I have some? <laughs> wow. <sighs> yes. I know how you feel. Yeah. I mean, I was very close to my grand and I think Grieving is not easy and having to, I think, I think what hurts me the most is the fact that I think I've lost connection with her. Okay. Okay. I feel like she's not there, you know, physically, physically she's not, but even, even like spiritually, I can't, I, I can't connect with her. And I think that's what breaks my heart the most mm. is the fact that I can't, I can't see my way. Like, the things that I used to tell you, because we were very close, we used to speak about everything, everything. She knew my dreams. She would validate me and say, "Ah, was so, so right, so so right." But not hearing that anymore has just. So I, I understand where you're coming from when you talk about your dad, and and feel that sometimes you want to tell him stuff and and you can't because he's not there. Because now when I go to his graveyard and I tell him, I can tell him he. But he doesn't respond, yeah. you know? It's the response. It's the response We're looking for. that I miss. But I have to just, I just have to take solace in the fact that I told them. Yeah. I told them because I don't want him to feel, because I, I have a feeling that he's watching over me mm -hmm. and he's, he's with me every single day. Mm -hmm. So I make the effort yeah. to make sure that I go to his grave as often as I can. Yeah. And when I pray, like I, you know, I acknowledge him when I pray because I want him to know that like, he's not here physically, but in he's in, he's me. I'm, that's powerful. I, I, I'm, so much of me is him because because you are his extension i'm his extension basically i'm his extension because it's the weirdest thing sorry if i can just like sidetrack for just two seconds no worries. um when i was telling you earlier about my mom quitting her job to take care of us um i have mad respect for her such mad respect for her and i love the fact that as hardworking as she was as a nurse, mm -hmm. she was just as hardworking as a housewife. Like she, she was amazing. Mm -hmm. And she made my sister, my brother, and I feel like we were a priority, mm -hmm. like our things mattered. Mm -hmm. Like she'd come to my ballet classes with 
a camera and record just a belly. It, it wasn't even a, a recital or anything, mm -hmm. just an, you know, just an ordinary class. Yeah. And so like, um, I have such mad respect for her and for the fact that she so, so much of who I am is obviously because of her, because she was such a, she was there through yeah. all of it. Yeah. But then a large chunk of who I am is also credited to my father as well, because even though I respect what my mother did, I don't think I could ever do what my mother did. I don't think I could ever be with a man who would expect me to quit my job and take care of the children. I, my ambitions are too big. I, I, my dreams are too big. I, and, and I got that from him because he always used to tell me, from when I was a little girl, there's even a videotape of him saying to me, Nye -nye, don't be mediocre. And then I say it and I'm like, Nye -nye, don't be mediocre. And I couldn't say mediocre, but like just the fact that from an early age, He's he was instilling that wow. in me. Wow. And so now as an adult, when I see my friends or when guys want to approach me and they want to date me and then they come with mediocre tendencies, I'm just repulsed by it because I'm just like, no, no. I've known from when I was three that I can't, I can't have mediocre. anything mediocre in my life. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, man, like so much, so much of me is because of him yeah. simply just by a, a line that he used to say to me every day growing up. It's intense. Don't be mediocre. I think that's a lesson for me today. Sitting here with you, that's one thing I've learned. Do not be mediocre. Don't be mediocre, girl. Don't, it'll be the death of you. It'll be the death of you. What is the one conversation you wish you had with your dad before he passed away? I really wish he could have talked to me about men and broken it down for me. Because yes, I talk to my mom, but my mom is like me. So we, she speaks to me as a woman. I wish he could have told me from a man's point of view and told me, Hore, when a boy says this, don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Even, despite how much you like him, when he says this, he's he only wants this, mm. so he's lying because of the. I wish he could have made sense out of it. I, I wish he could have helped me make sense out of these things. Mm. If you were to die today, how yes. would you want to be remembered? I was authentic. I want to be remembered because of the fact that I was authentic. I was me. I was proud of the fact that I'm a Tonga girl. Mm. I, I. I'm proud of my chocolate skin in a sea of yellow bones in a world where being a yellow bone is is the preferred complexion. I'm proud of my chocolate skin. Um, um, yes, I feel pressure from your Kim Kardashians and all these other people, but I'm proud of my slender body and 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 I also I also want to be remembered for. I want to do a lot of work, Wendy, like I, I've noticed that there's a lot of women on women hate. Mm -hmm. And um, the, I, I, I don't like that. We have enough opposition mm. from these disgusting men that roam the streets around us. I really don't think that us as women, we should be fighting each other and tearing each other down we need to be helping each other yeah. so that whenever we realize the filth that these men bring into our lives we can hold each other and support each other not be stealing each other's men and laughing at each other when when we come up short or when we fail like i so i want to be remembered as someone who who was very involved in the plight of, of, of women and wanting to raise women. And, and I love the fact that I'm a woman. I love the, flat, the fact that I'm a black woman. Mm. And, and that, that black girl magic tag, yes. I, I want to wear it with pride. So how do I want to be remembered when I die? Black girl magic. I've learned a lesson sitting here with you and I'm very... I'm humbled. Oh, wow. I've learned. And wow. thank you so much. 
thank you for having me. This was this was amazing, and you you caught me at a time I'm going through a, a tricky time in my life right yes. now. But talking to you also helped me mm. to remember that a hey girl, where's that black girl magic? Mm. Where is it? Mm. And when I walk out of here, mm. I want to walk out drenched yeah. in my black girl magic. Yeah. So let's walk out together this drenched in our black girl magic. Can I get a hug? Can let's I talk get about a hug? Things we keep inside deep in our souls that make us who we are. Bring us down the darkness and the light that we carry. Conversations we never had.